Wonderland Spectacle Company presents Maple, Maple Sugaring. Sugaring. Today we're in Topsfield, visiting Mass Audubon's Ipswich River Wildlife Sanctuary. We're here to learn about maple sugaring, which is how you turn the sap of sugar maple trees into syrup. Hear that? It's the music of sap dripping into the buckets. It's one of the signs of spring. Let's walk down to the Ipswich River. I'm Scott Santino, and I'm the education manager for Mass Audubon's North Shore. And right now we're standing in our sugar bush. As you take a look here through this forest, these are all sugar maples. Once we know that it's a sugar maple, we want to tap it during the winter months. And so it has to be tapped this time of year because with, there's something really fascinating going on inside the sapwood of the, the trunk of the tree. When we get freezing nights inside the sapwood, it condenses all of the gases inside the sapwood and when we get above freezing during the daylight hours, when it gets up over 40, it releases those gases and it creates pressure inside the tree trunk. And the pressure inside the tree trunk is greater than the atmospheric pressure. And so if you drill a hole inside the tree and you get this pressure this time of year, then what happens is that sap goes to the point of least resistance. And that's why we get sap flow. When we get to days in which are gonna be above freezing and nights are above freezing, the pressure inside the tree is gonna subside and the sap is no longer going to flow. When you tap sugar maples, they need to be approximately 40 years old. And at 40 years old, you're gonna have a sugar maple that's about 10 inches in diameter. And so of course you can't ask a tree, how old are you tree? So the way that we do it is we use some calipers. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna measure the diameter of the tree trunk. And so I'm going to do that today, and it looks like this tree here, it has a diameter of 17 inches. And so that's good. So this means that this tree is old enough or wide enough in order for us to put in a tap hole. Well, it's important to make sure you have the right equipment. This is called a bitten brace. All I'm going to do here is put the brace here on my hip, find a nice spot in the tree, and I'm going to lean in and we're going to turn. And again, you don't have to go in very far, you only have to go in about two inches until you get to the sapwood. Now that we've drilled our hole, we need to put in this tool called the spile. And the spile is what collects the sap. And then we grab a hammer, and all we have to do is go on up and tap that spile in like so. Now that we have the spile in, all we need to do next is grab our bucket, go up to the hook, hang the bucket, and again, if you get these Freezing nights followed by above freezing days, as that sapwood warms up, you may get some sap flowing. You need to make sure that you put the cover on the bucket because if your buckets aren't covered, what's gonna get into them? Snow and rain. And if you get snow and rain in your buckets, that's just gonna make our job much harder when we get to the sugar house when we need to boil down sap into yummy maple syrup. The reason why you wanna tap a sugar maple is sugar maples have a higher percentage of sugar in their sap. On average, we're getting two to three percent sugar in the sap in a sugar maple. Now, what does that mean? That means you need to boil between 40 and 45 gallons of sap in order to get one gallon of syrup. So if you've ever wondered why that 100% maple syrup at the grocery store is so expensive, it's because it takes a lot of hours and a lot of work to make a little bit of that yummy maple syrup. Listening to the music of the sap dripping into the buckets inspired us to make our own music. So let's make musical glasses, or maybe we should call it water music. Here's what you'll need. Drinking glasses, water, sticks, we're gonna use wooden spoons. Spread out your glasses and try tapping them with your sticks to make music. Hear how the matching glasses sound the same and the different glasses make different tones. 
pour water into the glasses. Listen to how the matching glasses now sound different. That's because water slows the vibrations of the sound down. So the more water you add, the lower the tone will sound. Now make up your own tune. <laughs> 